Visual Studio Code is amazing, but there's a ton of customization and can be quite overwhelming. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how you should set up VS Code and all the different things you need to look out for to make sure you optimize your experience for the best programming possible. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And Visual Studio Code is pretty much the best text that are out there in my opinion, especially when it comes to web development. But like I said, there's tons of customization. So when you first download Visual Studio Code, you're gonna be presented with a screen that looks something like this. And even if you already have it installed and have gone through this, I'm going to show you a lot of tips that are going to help you get it set up in the most optimal way. So the first thing you wanna do is choose your theme. By default, you're presented with this dark theme, which in my opinion is really great in the theme that I use, but you can change it to a light theme or a high contrast theme. Or if you want, you can click this see more themes button and you can see there's a list of a few more options that they recommend or you can click browse additional themes and this is going to give you a huge list of themes that you can you know, configure and each one you can live preview. So you can just kind of tab through each one that you want with the arrow keys and you can see exactly what they look like and it's going to live preview and you can just hit enter when you find what you want or just stay with the default. Another great setting you can enable is settings sync. So if you just click this enable settings sync button, you can tell it what settings you want, click sign in and turn on. And then no matter what computer you're using, when you download Visual Studio Code, as long as you enable the settings sync and use the same account, it's going to sync all of your extensions, settings, keyboard shortcuts, and so on, which means you only ever have to set up VS Code once and it's going to work everywhere you want it to. Now, if you already have downloaded VS Code and skipped this step, you can go to File, Preferences, and here you can turn on Settings Sync if you want to do that from the menu. Next, you can see here that there's this thing called the Command Palette. If you hit Control shift p this is where you can run pretty much any command in VS Code. For example, if you want to change your theme, you can come in here and change your color scheme this way. So every single thing that you can do in VS Code, if you hit Control shift p you can search for it, and you can find exactly how to do it from here. And you can even see there's like file icon themes you can change, and I recommend downloading a file icon theme that you like. Continuing on, you can see that this has a bunch of support built in for things like JavaScript, TypeScript, and so on, but not all languages have support out of the box. So if you're working with a language like Python that's not supported, you can click this Browse Language Extensions, and you can see over here all the different extensions you can install. So for example, we can add Python support by clicking Install. And the nice thing about Visual Studio Code is if you're in a file that's not supported, for example here, if we just create a new like test.py, that's a Python file, but we don't have Python support. You'll see you get a message down here. It's probably a little hard to see. It just says, do you want to install the recommended extension for Python? Click install, and that's going to bring you to the installation and download that Python extension for you. So if you're working in a file type that has an extension for it, it'll recommend to, hey, download this extension or look for an extension for this. Now we can just close out of this, close out of this, go back to the getting started. Another thing, we'll just skip to the next section here because you can kind of go through this on your own time if you want, but there's this editor playground. I highly recommend opening this up and going through this. This is going to give you like a walkthrough of all the different things that you can do in VS Code that make it so useful. I'm not gonna cover all of them in this video. I have a few videos that cover like shortcuts and so on that are really useful. I'll link in the cards and description for you, but this covers a lot of really useful tactics that you need to learn. Now, if we go back to the getting started here, You'll see also that they have a built-in terminal. If you just hit control and the tilde key by default, that's going to pull up the terminal, which is really useful. And you can change the terminal by default, it's PowerShell. I'll show you how to change it to Git Bash a little bit later in this video, because that's what I recommend for Windows users. And there's a few other things that you can do. And if we go to the next section here, you can see again, some more steps on how you can actually go about using VS Code optimally. I'm not gonna go through all these in depth, but one important one is that you can actually use Git directly inside VS Code. If we go to the sidebar here, you can see there's a source control set tab. And as long as you're inside of a Git repository, this is going to give you a bunch of information. We can click initialize repository, for example, and it's going to say, hey, we've made changes to this test.py. You know, we could add it, for example, if we wanted to. Now it's in the stage changes, we could remove it. You can do everything related to Git development directly from this tab. And while I personally prefer to use the command line, having this visual workflow where I can see, hey, these are the changes I've made to this file and so on, where if I come and go to that file and actually make some changes inside of it, and I save that and I come back over to my source control, I can see, hey, it went from this empty file to this you know, green file here that has some additional text inside of it. So with all that said, I'd recommend you go through all these getting started steps. And if you've already made some changes to your VS Code and you don't see this, the one way you can see it is by just hitting open a new window of VS Code. And what that's going to do is it's gonna pop you up to the getting started page by default. But if you still don't see the getting started page, what you need to do is you need to go to your preferences, go inside of your settings. So if we just go up to settings here and type in welcome. So if we type in welcome here, you'll see at the very bottom workbench startup editor, you want to select this as the welcome page. That way it's going to show you the welcome page immediately when you open up a new window of VS Code. If you don't have this set to welcome page, it won't show that for you. So you won't see those getting started things. 
Now, speaking of settings, this is kind of the next section I want to talk about because there's a ton of different settings you can change. As you can see, there's this side on over here where you can kind of go through and figure out exactly what settings you want based on this menu and you can scroll through. And like I said, it is a massive list. There are so many different settings that you can configure, but you can also search for settings. For example, if you want to change some settings based on your font, as you can see here, oh, we can change our font family. And a font family that I really like to use is a font called Fira Code. This is a really great font that I love. And if we just make sure we save our setting, that'll change us to that Fira Code font. As you can see, it's just a slightly different font. And what I really like about Fira Code is it has font ligatures. So if we click this edit in settings JSON, that'll allow us to actually edit this setting because we can't edit it from this page. That is going to open us a JSON version of this where we can set all of the different settings we want. For example, you can see that our theme right here is the default dark theme and I'm zoomed in really far, which is why my zoom level is set to three. So if we wanted to change that font ligature, if I go back into our settings here, I just click this cog. And what that's going to do is if we just say copy setting as JSON, then what we can do after we click that is go back to our settings JSON and just paste that down. And that's going to paste down the default for that setting. So as you can see, our editor.font ligatures is set to false. If we change this to true, which is something I like to do with this fear code font. You can now see when we write things like an arrow, or if we write something like, you know, three equal signs next to each other, it's actually going to show those as symbols instead of showing them as just three equal signs or an equal sign and a greater than. If we change this back to false, you can see that this is what it would normally look like, but by setting the font ligature to true, you can see we get this cool looking symbols. And as long as you use a font such as Fira Code that supports these font ligatures, you're going to get that. And I think it's really useful in my opinion, especially as you're trying to glance through a file, it's a lot easier to see, you know, this triple equals or this arrow, they kind of stick out more, which I really find useful. But again, it's entirely personal preference. Now let's just make sure we close out of that. And one thing to notice is that this settings JSON file, it's the exact same as this settings file here. It's just in JSON format. And up in the top right hand corner, you can see this little file icon. You can click that to kind of toggle between the JSON and the non JSON version. Now, like I mentioned, there's a lot of different theme customizations you could do, such as color theme, icon themes, and so on. I'd recommend going through and configuring these to your own needs. But another thing that's really important to change in your settings is the format on save. So as you can see, there's this like format on save. And what it'll do is every time you save a file, it'll format it based on whatever formatter you have. So if we just toggle this, now what it's going to do is automatically format our code for us. So let's just come in here and we're just gonna create a test.js file. I'm just gonna say like test equals test. Just kind of write out some code. Whoops, if I can spell properly, there we go. We can just come down here and we can like put a comment that says this. And when I click save, if we have like really weird tabbing and stuff, it's going to format that for us. And by default, you'll notice it's not really doing too much formatting. If I do define something like a function here and I come in and I just say like this, but I mess up my formatting. For example, I do this, I click save. You're going to see that's going to format for us, but the actual default formatter is pretty limited. It doesn't do too much when it comes to formatting. So I recommend if you're working with web technologies like JavaScript or TypeScript, I'd recommend installing an extension called Prettier. So if we go over to the right or the left hand tab, you can see this extensions button. And here you can search for all the different extensions that there are inside of VS Code. There are tons of them, but I'd recommend just installing Prettier. So we see here Prettier has 19 million installs. We can click install, and this is an incredibly useful extension that does some really good auto code formatting for us. And if we go into settings and we now search for Prettier, you'll see that in our extension section, we have a bunch of different settings we can change. And the main thing that I wanna do here is make sure we set up Prettier as our default formatter. So if we just search for formatter here, you'll see it's default formatter. We just wanna change this to be Prettier. So if we just search for Prettier, Hopefully it's going to be in there. It doesn't look like it's in the list by default. We can just copy this setting as JSON, come over to here and paste this down. Now, in order to figure out what we type here, if we just go back to the extension, we scroll down a little ways, you'll see right here, it tells us exactly how to set up the prettier formatter. So if we just copy this text right here, we can paste that in as our default formatter. And now it's going to use prettier as our default formatter. So if we go over to this test file, hit a bunch of tabs and hit save, you'll notice it formats everything for us and it's going to do a ton of formatting. And I really like this because when you're first starting out, especially learning a language, it can be hard when you have bad formatting and learning your code. So with a formatter like prettier, it's gonna format everything for you, which makes it easier to write and read your code if it has consistent formatting. Also, you'll notice something interesting here is you can also configure settings per language. So inside your settings, what you can do is you can just come in here and you can say, for example, JavaScript. And now what you're going to do is you're going to say all the settings inside this object are only going to apply for JavaScript. So we could say editor dot font size, for example, and we could set the font size to like, I don't know, let's say 32. So it's quite large. 
Now, if we go to our JavaScript file, you can see our font size is very large, while in our Python file, our font size is still normal. This is really useful. For example, you only want to have the default formatter be used on JavaScript. You can just set both of these settings in here, and now only your JavaScript files are going to use Prettier, and only the JavaScript files are going to format on save. So of all the different settings, the main ones you want to focus on are going to be your font family, font ligatures if you want that, your different themes, as well as formatting things on save using whatever formatter you want. I personally prefer Prettier, especially when working with web technologies. And the next thing you want to focus on are the different extensions you're going to install, because we already have like our Prettier extension. And for example, we already have our Python extension, but there's tons of other extensions you can use. For example, you can see there's this installed section, so you can see your installed ones. Popular are just popular extensions, that's what the name is. And recommended are like, hey, based on the files you've worked with and like your computer and so on, I recommend you download these. So for example, Git Lens is in here. This is a super great extension that makes it really easy to work with Git, especially when you're working on a large team. I highly recommend downloading this. Another really useful extension is called Live Server. The live server extension just makes working with pages so much easier because you can essentially open up an index HTML page inside of a server and it's going to just automatically work. And every time you make a change, it's going to live refresh that for you. So this live server extension is one of my favorite. I use it in almost every video. Another great extension that you want to download is going to be one called REST Client. Now there's tons of ones you can use, for example, Thunder Client, REST Client, and essentially all these allow you to do is to make API calls to API endpoints inside of VS Code. So you can you know, write out, for example, what your extension is going to be. So you can like make a request to that and so on. For example, here is an example of a Git request or a post request. You can save those inside of a file in VS Code and make those different requests directly in VS Code so you can test out APIs and endpoints. It works very similar to something like Postman, but it's going to be inside VS Code. Now, other than that, there aren't really too many extensions I say are must need, but if you want an idea of some good extensions you can download, I have a full video covering VS Code extensions. I'll link in the cards and description for you. Now, with that said, I kind of want to give just a very quick overview of how the VS Code is laid out. As you can see on the top, you have all of your different files, pretty self-explanatory. On the left, you have your sidebar, which you can close with Control B, so you can open and close that easily, or you can just click here to close it and open it. And you have your Explore section. This just shows you all your files and folders. You can create new ones at the top here. Search allows you to just search anywhere inside of your project. So for example, I could search for test, and this is going to give me all the files and locations where the word text is. Then here we have our source control section we already talked about. Debugging, what you can do is you can hook up and run a debugger. So like you can connect this to Chrome to debug your code directly in Chrome, and it'll allow you to put breakpoints, for example, like this, inside your code, and those are going to be caught by the debugger. We have our extensions tab, and then we also have a testing tab. So depending on the different language you're using, you may see this testing tab. For example, it comes with the Python one. I wouldn't worry too much about this, though. You might not see this if you work in something just like JavaScript. Also, at the very bottom here, you can see the section that says master. If you're working with Git, you can see all your different stuff, like what branch you're on and like checking out and so on. You have this error section here where you can see different errors saying, hey, this variable is not defined in Python. That's really useful. And you can, again, open and close this with control tilde. And you can see it's got the problems, output, debug, and your terminal. And then over on the right hand side, we just have some different settings for different extensions and so on that are running, like the language you're working in and so on. Not too important to mess with. Now, I did mention that I'll tell you how to change your default terminal down here. So I'll show you how to do that. It's going to be inside your settings. So if we just search for terminal here, all we need to do is just go down and find the correct extension here for this setting that we need to do to change our terminal. And if we just scroll down quite a ways, you can see here a little bit more, a little bit more. There we go. We have our integrated terminal. And we can see here by default, our default profile for Windows is set to null. We want to change this to git bash. So just select that from there. And now if we go over to our settings.json, you'll see the integrated default profile for Windows is git bash. So now when I open up my terminal, if I just exit out of that one and open it up again, you can see now Git Bash is being loaded. And when I click this plus button, you can see it's opening up a brand new Bash terminal instead of using that Windows PowerShell terminal. So you can change it just by doing this. And that's all the important stuff you need to set up to work with VS Code. If you want to go more in depth into VS Code, I have a bunch of videos covering themes, extensions, and snippets. You can find all those linked over here. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.